Hey, a pleasant good day, everyone. Even after a very, 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 very disheartening loss by our Philadelphia Phillies yesterday, there's a lot of excitement going into tonight's game, and that's number one, because Aaron Noah, our ace, is on the mound trying to get us going and win two out of three, like I said, we have to do, in my opinion, to have any momentum going down the stretch run and to kind of get going a little bit to not knock ourselves out of the playoffs. But what is very positive coming into today's game is it's Mickey Day, in Philadelphia, Mickey Moniak, the 2016 first overall pick, will be batting ninth and playing left field today after pinch running yesterday. So obviously, uh, Joe Girardi has confidence in the kid, plus you have to put him in due to injuries, but he, he also hasn't played certain guys as much as he should, I think, so it's nice to see that Moniak's going to get his opportunity right away. Because when you have a top prospect up, in my opinion, there's no point of waiting. You want to see what he has, and you want to give him a cup of coffee. That can only do a guy better, not worse, um, in my opinion. So I think this is a perfect opportunity for him. He also gets to go up against a fairly very solid pitcher in Seth Lugo. So it's not so he's putting him up against a guy that ain't no slouch. So that's good confidence boost in the kid. And I agree with Joe Girardi for doing that. I think that's a good move. Other than that, the rest of the lineup is Andrew McCutcheon, who's DHing tonight, since Moniak, who also is a very solid um, should be a very solid fielder. Uh, when you watch him in the minors, he kind of knew how to track balls. Well, he actually has played a lot of uh, center, but also has played the corners. And then Hazley went back to center, which in my opinion is his best fielding position. He should have caught that ball in right field, as I said in my previous video, but I, there is um, different angles in, diff in each position. And I think anybody that's played baseball in general, that's not a major league thing. That's a baseball thing. If you're playing left field, right field, center field, you're not getting a ball hit to you anywhere close to it at the same angle as if it's right at you because then it's just an atom ball. But uh, that's not an excuse. That's just a fact of the way that the game is. And then Bryce Harper's hitting second, playing right field. If he keeps struggling, I think eventually you're going to have to move Harper down because you can't have a guy that's really struggling at the plate hitting second. That's not going to work. I understand He's paid a lot, and he's the guy you want to try to get going at the top of the lineup, but sometimes you can't do that. Uh, he's only down, he's all the way down to 243 now because in his last seven games, he's hitting 231. Within the last two weeks, he's hitting 173. So Harper really needs to get going big time and really get consistent and get some consistent ABs going here. Then you have Alec Bohm, who's going to stay at the three spot. The rookie is still doing... Uh, well, he has a 3.11 average, three homers, 19 RBIs, and an 8.21 OPS. And in his last seven, he is still hitting 3.08. So he hasn't shown any sign to slowing down. Then you got Didi, who's just been an epitome of consistency for the most part. He's been one of the most fun players to watch on the team this year, hitting cleanup and playing shortstop. And then Gene Segura, who made a lot of nice play. He made that home run yesterday, and he made that great play at a third base. Hopefully, he can get fully going and kind of. I mean, he has a lot of good numbers in terms of RBIs and homers this year. The thing is, uh, in his last seven games and last two weeks, he's finally playing to the batting average. He has a 340 and a 333. So I've been warming up to him a lot more, and he's a guy sometimes I get on for lack of hustle and so on and so forth. But he's definitely got to give credit where credit's due. The last couple weeks for him, he's picked it up as other guys have fallen off. And then you got Andrew Knapp, Nappy, who's been a very good backup. Good for him. One of the best guys out there. Great to see him have key success. And then you have Adam Hazley hitting seventh, followed by the Gooses Loose Goslin, who gets a chance to start going again. He's been struggling himself. Uh, local area, Malvern Prep Kid, as we all know, one of my favorite guys. And um, he, I think, is a hitter that he's a... He's one of those utility players, so usually utility players go through bumps in the road because they're not everyday starters, and he's obviously been getting more and more time due to injury than he usually would be getting. He's been off in the last couple of weeks, and especially in the last seven, but I do believe Phil Goslin is going to get going. Putting him in against a guy like Lugo is smart because he tries to locate uh, his fastball pretty good to set up his other pitches. And we know Goose can pull it or go the other way or go up the middle. So I do like that play as well. And then last but certainly not least, Mickey time, Mickey Moniak hitting ninth for the Phillies tonight. And that's going to be a joy to watch. 
and I just love the fact that they're giving them playing time and not just having them up just because of injuries. When you have a prospect like that, that yes, he might not be developing as quick as we hope, but he also was out of high school. It's not like he was out of college as of 2016, so four years really ain't that long. I believe you should play him, and that is a very smart decision. This is going to be a fun game. You got Noah against Lugo. Definitely a game that you might be able to take the under in the first five innings, potentially four, unless if it's still at three and a half. That's a really small line. If it went up, you probably could take the under in the first five. I want to trust the Phillies bullpen to take an overall under because we saw they blew that yesterday. That game would have been an under as an overall under, but the bullpen screwed it up. But... This is a game I'm very happy going into because we got Moniac debuting, a prospect I like. We got Knowles, who's always fun to watch from the mound. And also, McCutcheon keeps destroying the ball, and he's been hitting well. His fielding, because which is natural because of his ACL, he can't get to some of the balls he seemed to used to get to, which I think you'll see him do better next year because it normally takes about a full year with that just from reading different things and uh, listening to different things on MLB Network and so on and so forth about players that know what they're talking about, talking about those types of things. But... I'm confident tonight. I think the young kid Moniak is going to bring some nice energy, and whenever Knowles pitches, we know that brings some good energy to the team. So I do believe that the Phillies should, he would have should, because a lot of things that should happen have not happened for this team. Should because of the energy playing your top prospect, one of them, excuse me, gives plus Aaron Noah being on the mound, should be able to win this ball game. So this has been a look ahead to the Phillies and Mets with Noah and Seth Lugo on the mound. And in Mickey Moniak's debut, can't wait to watch the kid out there. He's basically your second leadoff hitter at the bottom of the lineup. The dude has speed. Watch him steal some bases if he gets on today as well. Have a great, safe, and pleasant night, everybody. Go Phillies. Ring that bell. This is Sports Fanatic News. I'm Joe Boric. Please like, comment, subscribe, and hit the bell. Peace out, everyone.